talk is cheap. Toya have made an endless number of moves to be independent from the evils that be. And that's what this video is about. About overcoming, but first identifying evil in its various forms. And I love making videos about things that other people don't talk about. And there's countless, endless videos on YouTube about evil and modalities. I've made more than a few, but I'd like to point out the identification of same and how to overcome same. One, of course, is being independent. Um, by the way, I got uh, two of these. I had one, and I've hatched out a lot of eggs um, over the year, over the decades, actually. Not recently, but this is like an updated version of the one that I used to have. And I'm going to hatch out all these eggs that are on their way here. The lower part's over here. This is just a plastic-coated styrofoam. This is an uh, egg incubator. I know how to incubate eggs. I've got over a dozen... Um, Indian River ducks on the way. They're a fight, flightless duck that was uh, bred in Indonesia. And uh, M. Den geese on the way. The Indian River ducks are special because they produce a lot of eggs. They kind of, they're completely flightless. They stand up like they're on their tippy toes, unlike most uh, typical ducks. And uh, they love foraging for slugs and snails and all the stuff that you don't want in your garden. I know they're good insects in the garden, but uh, they're actually wonderful little ducks, and, and they won't uh, quack you to death like uh, some ducks. So those are on the way. The geese are actually supposed to arrive uh, tomorrow, and uh, I'll hatch them out, and uh, need to get some more uh, brooder supplies since they haven't used brooding supplies for fowl in decades, but I uh, haven't lost my knack for hatching out uh, bird eggs and uh, knowing how to brood them, heat lamp, you know, what to feed them, so on and so forth. Um, by the way, I don't know if I can make a video about it because it entails uh, details that have been asked now for like two years what the cause of Havana syndrome is, and I'm like 99.99% certain I've identified it. It's a two-part item, I'm going to use the word item, but I don't know if I could actually make a video about it because then you're actually, you know, giving details about things, but I've identified what's causing Havana syndrome. It actually fits all the details and the parameters of uh, what it's actually passing through to uh, reach its uh, intended destination. Um, if you're uh, interested in discussing that, I can discuss it in a live stream. Evil feeds on fear. I'm actually going to point out some of the things that are earmarks for things that you haven't considered about evil. And then I'm actually going to talk about a way out of that. And that's the important point, obviously, getting... You can talk about all the earmarks of evil, most of which people don't readily identify. And I noticed that from looking at society, because they don't. I mean, it's like right there, that close to the tip of their nose, and they still can't see it. We could actually blame that on sheer ignorance or common uh, um, stupidity. You take your pick. There are various uh, factors why people actually can't see it. One of its primary things, of course, that it feeds on fear, just like this fireplace, even though this fireplace is fake, feeds on the firewood, always has to be fed. It is never, ever, and just think about that for a second, if you have to pause the video, it is never self-sustaining. Evil has never been self-sustaining. It's the nature of the beast, actually. Um, ignorance also, too, has to feel. I'd like to point out a couple things I was talking about in the live stream before actually getting onto the core of evil. This is one aspect of evil, that it actually has to feed, like I said, just the fireplace. It needs attention. Um, used to be, it doesn't really happen here anymore. I hear it still happens in various parts of the United States. I think the Europeans actually, by and large, uh, banned this, where people would be, you know, knocking on your door, like, Hello, we'd like to talk to you about um, Save Your Bada Bing. Uh, <laughs> and uh, there are some flurfers, and I call them flurfers, or I also, too, call it uh, flatology. Humorously, it's people who think the earth is uh, shaped like a pancake, and I don't care what anybody believes. You know, if it makes you happy, not hurting anybody, I, I couldn't care less. Um, but the same thing with that innocent, although growing, movement, which has absolutely no basis in fact, logic, or rationality whatsoever, is that uh, 
you know, it begs acknowledgement. Wisdom is its own reward, and it sits silently. Things that are evil and ignorant have to scream and shout. I was actually in Sam's Club uh, trying to buy a steak yesterday, and there were these two uh, fools. Says, Hello, sir, do you own your own house? I, I can't, I, I told everybody in live stream what I actually said to those folks. I can't repeat it here. Um, but they weren't very happy. You know, if it were good and true, it really doesn't need advertising. People would seek it out because it would emanate from the darkest of dark of anywhere in the world or anywhere on the Internet. It's always the evil and ignorant stuff that actually has to scream and shout and uh, parade itself. And the same thing is uh, true of, you know, like the dozen or so uh, flurfers or the people that are interested in flatology. And it's no different than any other belief system. And of course, I've said a million times that nobody uses their beliefs, but it begs to be acknowledged. You know, if it was fundamentally true, that or any other, you know, silly belief system, it wouldn't beg for attention. It would emanate, you know, like the sun peaking uh, from the far east of the globe. <laughs> you notice I inserted the word globe. <laughs> Um, it's always darkest before the dawn. I mean, it doesn't seek attention. But these entities, just like evil, it, it seeks to multiply itself. And wisdom has never been like that. Things that are like that are evil, virus, fungi. I'm not supposed to say funguses. You're supposed to say fungi. <laughs> I know that. It requires just like this fire, even though it's not a real fire, to be fed, it can't stand on, a lot, on its own. If it's fundamentally true, it doesn't need acknowledgement, it doesn't have to be fed, it doesn't need attention. Um, also true regarding belief systems, I have to get onto the parameters of evil rather quickly here, is that Anything, and just think about this for a second. I don't care what anybody believes. I'm not interested. What do you believe? Do you believe in this? Do you believe in that? I get asked that all the time in life. She's like, you know, beliefs are the playthings of children. I'm not interested in beliefs. I'm not even interested in my beliefs. And everybody harbors certain beliefs, and so do I. You know, I harbor the belief that uh, a big fat uh, ruby red grapefruit is super awesome. Someone else might go like, grapefruit? Yeah. <laughs> so... It's my belief that I have a better evening when I'm peeling a ruby, not regular grapefruit, peeling a ruby red grapefruit and eating slices of grapefruit. You know, that's a personal like and, and belief, but I mean, it's not everybody's. But just think about this for a second, regarding these countless beliefs. If it isn't timeless, well, Guru Bada Bing didn't come around until the first century, or... You know, he didn't fly up from his horse and spring into heaven after he died, you know, until the year so-and-so. And then, you know, the, the holy doctrine has been established. Before then, everybody was doomed to an eternal life in purgatory, you know. You, you ask that of any beliefs. So what about all the people that came before the, the holy guru, Bada Bing? Oh, Maria Patri, Fili, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Well, what they're doing is they're waiting in limbo. For the Holy Savior to come by and emancipate them from their eternal demise. Oh, okay, so the reason why they've been suffering for 100,000 or 2 million years is because they were born at the wrong time. And, you know. <laughs> if it's not universal, it can't be true. If it only had a beginning, well, before then, before the word was established by the great famous uh, guru, Bada Bing, who you know, who, uh, <clears throat> who ascended, uh, descended from the clouds and reascended and then reascended again, uh, <laughs> according to the book of, of, uh, of, I've, I've got a holy book over here somewhere. I do. But this one's actually about facts, logic, and wisdom. It's got a horrible cover. The horrible, the cover on it is so horribly childish. It's like a five-year-old drew it. This is the Upadisa Sahasri. These are fundamental things that must essentially be timeless. I mean, the truth is always inherently there. But from the aspect of these beliefs, it's, well, you know, it didn't exist until the Guru came along. It, it was always there, but, you know, you didn't hear about it until he established it. So, point being, making a long story short here, which I'm trying to do very quickly, 
is that it has to be timeless. It has to be universal. If it's place-specific and time-specific or language-specific, this is the premise behind genuine metaphysics. This is the premise behind what is called Sophia Perennis. I don't know if you know what Sophia Perennis is. It has to be timeless. It can't even belong to the Earth. It has to be completely intergalactic from every galaxy from one end of the universe to the next. It has to be a timeless truth. If it is guru-centric or time-centric or place-centric, it can't be the truth. Now, nothing is known except the modality of the knower. This is true. There have been countless establishments of truth as repeated through many different people. Jakob Böhme, um, Emanuel Swedenborg, Meister Eckhart, Walter Russell, uh, Dr. Ananda Ketish Kumaraswamy, a very brilliant man, but he got some things really, really wrong also. Depends on what spectrum. Anything greater than like 65% is really, really high success rates. That's high praise. Most of these people that people say, have you read so-and-so? I was like, yeah, yeah, I have. It's horrible. I mean, basically less than 20% is what a lot of these people, have you ever read so-and-so? The people they recommend is, are uh, people that basically got nothing right. I mean, 15, 20%, I mean, that's pretty bad. But that's still pretty good considering most out there, like 5%. Or less. The idea of free will that people don't understand, free will is potential, not actual, the idea of the premise of evil, all these countless things that are, are wrong. Anyway, that's getting sidetracked. It, may, it must be timeless for it to be true. And anything that is true doesn't beg acknowledgement for it. In other words, it's not good until you have a big following. And I will point out to you, and I'm not going after any religion specifically, but they're all like this. Every major, and religion is secularized metaphysics, by the way, which is basically a nice way of saying dumb down metaphysics. Every major belief system, and that is not praise, that is me being derogatory towards saying, every major belief system would not even be known today if it weren't for the patronage of some super rich, super famous persona. Um... I'm trying to think of uh, King, uh, King Ashok in the case of Buddha Sasana. Uh, I'm not going to say what that religion is called since that name didn't exist until the 16th century, roughly 1,700 years after the fact of the death of that uh, guru. But without King Ashok, it would be completely a dead uh, metaphysics. Originally it was a metaphysics. It was a liberation ontology based in wisdom. It's uh, amoral and uh, amoral liberation ontology based in wisdom. We wouldn't know about that. We probably wouldn't know about Plotinus if it wasn't for the fact, ironically, and Plotinus was completely against creationism. Plotinus was a proponent of Pythagorean Platonic emanationism. But all Christian mysticism, 98% of Christian mysticism, I don't care if you believe me, is uh, based in reinterpretation passing Plotinus through the prism of Christianity. Without Constantine, that particular religion, I assume you know who Constantine was. Without him, we would not even know about that religion. It would be like some sort of historical uh, flatulence footnote in the annals of time. Yeah, but because of him, and because of King Ashok and these, right, that's the only reason why that we know them. Not because they were super true and supernatural and, you know, it's the ultimate truth has descended from heaven. It's because of these super wealthy, super influential royalties like King Ashok and Constantine. He, he, what, is there any reason that nobody ever mentions that fact? Huh? Is there? Anyway, getting on to evil. Just think about that. If it's not timeless, you know, it can't be true. It can't be place-specific, time-specific, and guru-specific. It can't be the truth. Why? Well, the truth didn't exist until they came along. I was like, so everybody before then was doomed. Yeah, yes, they were. But when they're waiting in limbo, they still have a chance at eternal salvation. You know, the guru has descended into the place of limbo to free these people that, you know, were born and died long before he came along. <laughs> okay. Whatever you think is fine with me. We have to ask ourselves a question about evil. I'd like to make a list here. And these are all the aspects of evil.
Man, evil, of course, hates anything that is beautiful, and what is beautiful is a mirage, or a logos of the one, of natural order, of the divine. It censors people. It loves the censor. It will preach about uh, speech and how everybody should be heard, but as soon as you start to tell the truth, which is against it, it will censor you in any way, shape, or form. It does, just like these different belief systems, it begs recognition. It begs for attention. Does it beg for affirmation? It's like, if it's true, it doesn't need affirmation. The truth is the truth is the truth. It doesn't require anybody else to affirm it. A lot of these evils, and I'm not talking about religion, I'm talking about evil in general. There's an evil group of Hydra. I'm not talking about religions now at all. I'm talking about genuine evil, the evil that's going on in this world right now. Of course, there's always evil going on, but we've got a big evil going on right now. I call it Hydra. You can call it whatever name you want. You know the names that they go by. By the way, wisdom can never be common. Nothing true is popular and nothing popular is true. And also, too, groupthink is 100% wrong. If you've got a large people, uh, group of people believing in it and following it, it can't be true. It can't be. Groupthink is not always 100% wrong, but at 99.9% .9 it's wrong. If it can't survive on its own and it has to be fed, just like this fire, it is evil. Natural order, the one, God, take your pick, is rest. It doesn't have to be fed, it doesn't have to be affirmed, it doesn't have to be worshipped. Yeah, do you ever think about that? If it thirsts of membership and for membership, it must get these people knocking on the door. Hello, would you like to join our, our little group of uh, believers? You know, the more we got, the better we are. Well, that's evil. That, everybody should automatically recognize, well, that's evil. You need more membership to, uh, you know. There, when I drive to Florida, there's a sign on the side of the road. I think it's like the fifth largest religion in the world. Maybe the sixth. I can't remember. This is religion bada bing. is the fifth largest in the world. Did you know it's that big? So, <laughs> that's a bandwagon fallacy. That's evil. Well, you got this many people believe in it, and it can't be wrong. <laughs> no! That's a bandwagon fallacy. So does it thirst for membership? Does it? Big no-no. That's a sign that it's evil. It will tell any and all lies to any and all ends to get you to submit to it and its stockpiled powers, however great or small they may be. It finds power in other people's silence and cowardice. If it feeds off of you keeping your mouth shut because you're spineless and or your cowardice, it's evil. It treats life cheaply. Oh man, there's a big earmark of evil. It despises your independence and homeschooling. Uh, the largest homeschooling site on uh, Fakebook was just um, hacked and they replaced it with pictures of like patio furniture and and indoor beds and furniture and it's like small space living they replaced it with. It had like uh, over 60,000 followers. That sounds like an inside job. I mean, you don't go to the effort of uh, hacking the largest homeschooling uh, Facebook and website and replacing it, going to all these detailed effort, replacing it with just pictures of pretty furniture. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like the GOVT. No greater evil than the GOVT, by the way. By the way, fake book and the GOVT are not this and this, they're this and this. Of course, you knew that already. It thrives off of your misery and your financial destitution. It hates, above all things, natural order. It despises you loving natural order, following natural order, your love of food and animals. I will point you again to my incubator over here. I'm going to hatch out a bunch of uh, de geese and quacks. Quack, 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 yeah? Self-sustaining, free eggs, food, bartering material. You want to know, people talk about alcohol and gold and silver and food is bartering. You know what another form of bartering material is? <clears throat> Fertile duck eggs, either for eating or for hatching. Or the ducks themselves, <laughs> that is a form of currency. The government don't like that. Which is the reason why 
uh, all of the past 48 hours been, oh my god, warning, warning, bird flu, Ooh, warning. Have you noticed that? It's popped up everywhere. Oh my god, it's way more wicked than the coof. Warning, Will Robinson, warning, warning, bird flu. <laughs> yeah, right. You must think I'm stupid. Okay. Evil doesn't believe that people have different capabilities. They want to mow everybody down. They call it tall poppy syndrome in Denmark and Australia. They just want to turn everybody into some sort of worker minion. Evil worships matter and despises spirit, which, since it's evil, you should do the opposite. You should despise matter, materiality, i.e. atomism. It's materialism. Atheism, by the way, fundamentally, has nothing to do with a God one way or the other. It is materialism. Another word for atheism, which the word is afios, not adios, it's called afios, which means the denial of a theurgic substrate to matter or phenomena. There's only matter, there's nothing underneath it, like spirit or no strings on the sock puppet, there's just a sock puppet. Well, that's stupid. Well, that's the way it is. I'm going to I'm going to strike you down if you don't believe what I believe. That's all there is. How dare you believe in something transcendent to physical matter. So evil worships matter, not spirit. By the way, before getting on to the answers to evil, um, since the Fed, let's think about this, since the Fed prints money at will, and the Fed is not federal and it's not governmental, does it, taxing you doesn't help anybody at all. People say, my taxes are going to this and going to... No. It doesn't help you, it doesn't help anybody but them. How are you helping them by keeping yourself perpetually broke? Oh, well, you can't rest or think. You're perpetually broke. The reason for taxes, since the federal government can print money at will, is to keep you perpetually in a tizzy, working your butt off with no rest. They despise you having time to rest and think. They absolutely despise it. They absolutely despise it. Uh, let's go on to the answers in part two on how to confront and overtake evil. Okay? Thank you. Okay, on to part two. How to override evil. How to overcome evil. You'd think these would be simple, and yet it really confuses people. Maybe a few of these a lot of people know. I think some of these people don't. Being independent. Being independent means you make up your own mind and your own decisions. There's an old saying that says, a better a sign that says no entrance than a sign that says no exit. This means if you're trapped and you have no other option, then you are, alas, that very rat in the maze that evil, Hydra, take your pick, wants you to be in. And you're like, I put my hand on the incubator over here. When you are independent in every way, shape, or form, they despise that. You find out what they despise, and I'm going to go through some of the list here. And you do the opposite. Whatever evil despises is the things that you should generally embrace. You should treat evil like children, seen but not heard. Was it uh, um, Mark Twain said that uh, those that... Uh, what is it again? Those that uh, read the news are misinformed. Those that don't read the news are uninformed. <laughs> I forget the third aspect of that. You should see it, but see it for what it is. Always have your eyes peeled. Like right now, there's screeching and crying all over the interwebs. Like, oh, warning, Will Robinson, the bird flu is coming. It is so wickedly, so wickedly um, <clears throat> dangerous. Hazardous. Oh, my God. I mean, that's me seeing and hearing it, but not being affected by it. If you have a sharp mind, like, ha, 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 look, this is, uh, this is the, uh, the uh, 2.0 scam on the horizon. Yeah. You should stand on your feet like those meerkats in Africa, and they're all looking around like, where's the danger, where's the danger, where's the danger? doesn't mean you're living in fear. If you see it on the horizon, then you can be ready for it. Don't be torn down. Once again, taxes have nothing to do with, you know, supporting roads and bridges and all this other garbage that we're lied to. It's about keeping us perpetually broke, perpetually torn down, so that we can't rest 
and we can't think. Here is a true ev uh, enemy of evil. Someone that is well rested and their mind is working properly so that they're making a rational, logical decision. Man, that is the enemy of evil, which is exactly what you should embrace. Don't be torn down. Always be resting and thinking. Turn off, tune out, and calm down. That's part of it. But, you know, still have your eyes on what's going on around you, but be able to see through it. Eat natural, of course, you know. I know I'm fat and out of shape, but believe it or not, I actually mostly, you know, I fail at some things, like that slice of cheesecake I had last night. Eat, nat <laughs> eat natural foods. Here's a great thing I heard not too long ago. I said, don't eat anything that didn't exist 130 years ago. Mac and cheese didn't exist 130 years ago. Triscuits didn't. Cheez-Its, Cheetos, Doritos, Soda Pop, <laughs> all these things that didn't exist. Don't do it. Grow your own food. Thanks for my grandfather. I'll always forget having the, you know, uh, hoeing out the weeds in the garden. He taught me how to grow food. Grow your own food. Have a safe chamber in your house that's uh, EMF blocked from the world and grounded. You can get Faraday fabric like everywhere, Amazon, eBay. It needs to be grounded for it to be most effective. There's like a mosquito or something flying around in here, which is kind of odd. There shouldn't be mosquitoes in April. Maybe it's a, a micro drone from the government. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Never, ever trust anybody from the G-O-V-T or anybody serving that false idol. You know why the G-O-V-T is so evil? It has no soul. It is an idol that is worshipped and there's a lot of people that feed it kind of like people bringing burnt offerings to Moloch the government basically is Moloch you have all these people that are feeding the various uh, tendrils of Hydra of the GOVT it doesn't have a soul it will r mow right over you like a steamroller don't trust the GOVT evil is rooted fundamentally in matter uh, materiality. Materialism is atheism, by the way. I can debate that until the cows hum, come home and I'll win every argument on atheism being materialism all day long. It's rooted in matter and idolatry. It seeks to destroy what it cannot assimilate. If it can't assimilate and draw you in, it will try to destroy you. Be aware, and I'm very aware, of the brown shirts that actually serve evil. These are the servants or the priests of Moloch or of Hydra. Take your pick. Yeah, this is what they are. They're servants. I've, these are the people that will hold you down while somebody, well, the, the GOVT or some other entity, you know, you know does uh, evil deeds upon you. Like the meerkats, be on uh, the tips of your feet. Keep your eyes on the horizon. Evil almost never ever creeps out and uh, pounces on anybody out of the bushes. Even dull minds can see it coming. Unfortunately, everybody has really dull minds. And they're just, they can't rest and they can't think. They're so focused on, especially right now, you, have, you know how expensive groceries are? By the way, April 15th is very close. It's like, what, 10 days away? That's the tax deadline. I wonder how many people just aren't going to pay. You know, there's a lot of consequence to that, but I've had a lot of people, I'm just not going to do it. Come and get me. I'm not advocating for that. I'm just telling you what I'm hearing out on the Internet. I, I paid mine, uh, unfortunately, but I did. So, yeah, the government uh, got me. Evil almost never once again creeps up on anybody. Evil despises wise people, independent people who don't listen to propaganda and eat natural foods, follow natural order and put the spiritual world way above the world of materiality. They say that there's only three people in the world, there's an old saying, you know, wolves and sheep and sheepdogs. You know who the sheep are. Bleh the people. The wolves, of course, are the people, the entities that prey on the sheep. 
And there's the sheepdogs, which are the protectors, the knights. All right? The knights. Oh, where's my... I got this for 30 bucks. It was made in 1879, right here. It's even stamped right there. It's French. Where else can you get something this nice for 30 bucks? Yeah? I wrapped the handle in raw and, uh, and leather stripping. And this nice, 30 bucks. Uh, my knight, my knight uh, a prop. The wolves, the sheep, and the sheepdogs. But that leaves out, actually, the fourth entity, the farmer. The farmer is master over the wolves, which are, the wolves, of course, would be like the executive branch and the military. The MIC, the military industrial complex. The farmer ultimately feeds the wolves. Feeds the wolves with the sheep, but the farmer has total control over the wolves as well. The farmer can pew, take care of the wolves if he wants. Everything is ultimately for the farmer. The wolves, of course, feed on the sheep, and the farmer feeds on the sheep too. But the farmer, you know, lets the wolves have some of the sheep. But the farmer is also, too, master over the sheepdog, the protector. This is an analogy, I think it came from the Marines or Delta Force. They talk about wolves, sheep, and sheepdogs. Well, you left out the farmer. That would be the G-O-V-T or Hydra. And you take your pick, actually, as far as the farmer goes. The sheep must ultimately... The sheepdogs, actually. The sheep must ultimately transform into badgers, as well as the sheep, really, and get off the entire farm and or hide from the farmer. Um, there's that old YouTube video, which is really, really funny, about the honey badger. You remember the honey badger? <laughs> that, honey, that video is really funny. <clears throat> if you haven't seen the honey badger video, you should actually watch it. It's, it's really, really funny. And it's a great metaphor for life. Um, most people are sheep, some people are wolves, and everybody's like, well, the sheepdogs, the knight in shining armor, the protector, it's like, well, yeah, but the sheepdogs are owned by the farmer. The wolves are a concern, which everybody's like, they identify the wolves, like, you know, the people, you know, the shady person walking the street and casing your house, wanting to know when you're not there so you can break in and take your stuff. Oh, there's the wolves, I see the wolves, right? Everybody's pointing out the wolves, but only the smart people are pointing out the farmers. Yeah. You're worried about the wolves while the farmer is back there sitting on his front porch swing. <laughs> Watching the whole show. He has control over the wolves, has control over the sheep, has control over... The sheepdogs. He owns the sheepdog. He bought the sheepdog. <laughs> so that Navy SEAL analogy of only three beings is slightly wrong. I love to read your comments on this. If you like these videos, my information from email to contact me is below. Also, to any donation is always very warmly welcome. Very much so. Lux e veritas. Have a lovely day.